In this video, we're going to look at vectors in the component form notation. I have a vector c whose tail is at the origin and tip is at the point negative 2, 3. In the ordered set notation, it is given by this. I want to ask the question, can we recreate this vector only using horizontal and vertical vectors? And sure we can, just using the tail to tip method. So I'll start with a vector a that goes from the origin, the tail of vector c, and goes horizontally out to the point 0, negative 2. Then take a second vector, the tail at the tip of the first vector, that goes from negative 2, 0, up to the tip of c. Using the tail to tip method, we know that the sum of a plus b is equal to c. The ordered set notation of a and b is given here. Note that b, its tail, is not at the origin, so you have to subtract the components of the tip and the tail to get the right ordered set notation. Or you can just translate so that its tail is at the origin, and you can see the tip is at point 0, 3. From before, we know that we can represent these vectors as the product of the magnitude times their own unit vector. A unit vector is a vector with magnitude 1 that points in the direction of the original vector. But I don't want to do that, as I want to represent it in terms of the Cartesian basis vectors i hat and j hat. They are unit vectors, but they point in the positive x and y axis, respectively. The number that multiplies them is then whatever's number necessary to recreate the horizontal and vertical vectors. In summary, the a and the b are magnitudes of the original vectors. The a hat and b hat are the unit vectors of the original vectors. i and j hat are the Cartesian basis vectors, unit vectors pointing in the positive x, positive y axes. And then these c sub x and c sub y are numbers that recreate the original vectors once multiplied by the Cartesian basis vectors. What are c x and c y? Well, from the graph, we can see that c x is negative 2 and c y is 3. Since i points in the positive x direction, we have to multiply it by negative 2 to give it a magnitude 2 pointing in the negative x direction. To recreate the vector b, we simply need to multiply j hat by 3 to give it a magnitude 3. It is already pointing in the positive y direction. To rewrite c, which is the sum of a plus b, is equal to negative 2 i hat plus 3 j hat. This is the component form notation, and you will see this through the rest of the course and all over physics books. But I want you to see this notation for what it is, and not just abstract quantities. This is a vector, and this is a vector, a and b, and we're adding these two vectors to get our original vector c. And these vectors are combinations of our basis vectors, which are real vectors, they just have a magnitude 1 and point in the positive x and y axes, where these are scalars whose value multiplies the number 1 to get us the right magnitude, and then sign indicates the direction. Just for a little practice of what these might look like, for example, you have a three-dimensional acceleration, a which is a vector, you would have some scalar a sub x i hat, plus some scalar a sub y j hat, plus some scalar a sub z k hat. The value of a sub x, a sub y, a sub z, then gives you the magnitude of each vector along the axes. The sine of a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z gives you whether it's pointing in the positive or negative x, y, or z axis. The total combination gives you the vector a. Remember, these vectors can vary in time. For example, let's say I have a two-dimensional time-varying velocity. I have this vector, which is a function of time. That means this scalar is a scalar function in time, and this scalar is a scalar function in time. i hat and j hat don't change. And one exception to this subscript notation is usually when we have positions, which I might represent by r vector, we typically don't do r sub x for the components, but just have the components be x, y, and z.